My name is Nick Kakamanolis. Um, I'm a white belt here at Kama Jiu Jitsu. I actually started Jiu Jitsu about a year and five months, give or take, uh, at a different school last year uh, because I started taking my son and I decided that I, once I had recovered from some major knee surgeries at the time, I wanted to do something that would help me physically improve or build upon old training that I had when I was still working for self-defense and have something to do with my children and hopefully teach them something that would help build confidence for them, protect them, as well as give me the confidence to protect them if anything ever happened. And of course, have some fun, learn, and again, physical aspects help quite a bit when you lose weight, you, you feel stronger, you feel faster. This was uh, my second competition now. Uh, the, la the first one I did was an IBJJF sanctioned competition back in April. Uh, I was training a under a different school, different instructors, different system altogether, so I wanted the opportunity to use what I learned at Kama Jiu Jitsu in a different format that uh, favored a little bit more of takedowns as well as the ground game. Uh, and some, some of the rules were different from IBJJF in terms of uniforms. Those aren't necessarily that important, but uh, a lot of the techniques that were necessarily, you know, not legal under IBJJF rules were allowed under the Jiu Jitsu World League rules that we just fought under. And uh, it was a good experience, a good chance for me to test out all the, the defensive aspects that we learned here and build on that and feel a lot more confident about the switch I made and uh, came over to Kama Jiu Jitsu and learned a different kind of Jiu Jitsu, I think better, in my opinion at least. So For the most part, they were generally with, with some minor rules and prohibitive techniques that were different from one versus the other. Uh, for example, we're allowed to do straight ankle locks, which typically they reserve only for blue belts under IBJJF rule sets. I think, frankly, many of the competition schools are out there, and I only learned about the differences between the two from watching yours and professors' videos. Um, they stress a lot of attacks. They teach their students attack, 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 rack up points. Um, we stress a lot of the defensive stuff, and I feel like I was better prepared for it this time. Uh, in that first competition, I not only entered in the heaviest division, uh, ended up going against some really big dudes, and unfortunately, I didn't have the techniques, the capabilities, uh, and the knowledge to be able to escape from them, so I ended up not really getting anywhere. I didn't win gold this round, but I felt a lot better prepared in terms of defense. Um, my opponent didn't try that many submissions, if any really. The techniques he did try to do in terms of pinning me, taking my back, etc., I was able to fairly quickly get out. Um, once I knew what I was doing and concentrated, because of course, the mental stuff sometimes goes out the window once you get dehydrated and you're, and you're struggling with somebody who's trying to uh, beat you, essentially. I felt a lot better prepared, essentially, overall. Everybody's different when they go into competition. A lot of folks will tell you that they get really nervous going in, they get a lot of butterflies, adrenaline dumps. I didn't find that was the case for me in either of my competitions. Your heart rate does tick up a little bit. Um, again, everybody's different when it comes to that stuff. In that first competition, I was heavier. I didn't cut as much weight, so I felt a lot better now physically. My big mistake that I didn't really make in the first one was that um, I, my competition this time started about 1 p.m. I was worried about drinking too much water or any of my pre-workout drinks that I usually do before training. Uh, I was worried I'd have to go in, into the bathroom one, right when they're calling me to go out onto the mat, and I didn't wanna have to deal with that running around the, the um, the venue trying to find a bathroom right when I'm supposed to be competing so I ended up not drinking enough water not hydrating enough in hindsight I realized it when I tried to go before my matches that I couldn't really go and also that my mouth was was dry after that first round I realized fairly quickly once I couldn't really concentrate on what I was doing and techniques would come to me here or there but I was somewhat dazed realized fairly quickly after that that hey I didn't drink enough water and that was probably my my biggest mistake that I made there I'd say if you're if you're planning to compete uh, try to think of it essentially as just another classroom day coming in training with your friends obviously you're not gonna know who you're gonna go against you're not not, not sure what they're gonna be doing to you but it is it's it's a learning experience and if you build it up to be this huge thing that I think is what's gonna make you nervous 
if you treat it as, hey, it's a learning experience, whether I win or lose, I have a good time and I feel like I can represent my school and my, my system and my learning well, that I think will help um, push off that, that nervousness a little bit. But always, always hydrate as much as possible beforehand. Use the bathroom as much as you need to, but do not skimp on water if you're gonna compete. Because I tell you what, that, that's gonna be, we always train to do things reflexively so that when you're in the heat of things and you kind of forget yourself because you're breathing hard or, or somebody's putting a lot of pressure on your face or your neck or your body or whatever the case may be, you're supposed to execute your techniques without thinking. You can't think when you're dehydrated. Your brain just doesn't want to work on you. And I kind of found that out the hard way this time around. So hopefully I'll be a lot better prepared for my third competition coming up and make sure that I, that I hydrate beforehand, so. We, we, our standpoint in terms of jiu-jitsu is we do Grandmaster Hickson's jiu-jitsu, Master Dave Kama's jiu-jitsu, and pass down to uh, Professor Young's. We focus on the self-defense aspects a lot. When you go into competition, you get a lot of these schools like Check Mat, uh, Gracie Gym, etc. They focus on earning points. And in a fight, nobody's worrying about points. You're either worrying about staying alive or keeping your limbs intact, or you're, or you're concentrating on injuring your opponent and getting them out of the fight. So where some techniques will come into play that, that can work in terms of the self-defense situation, a lot of it depends on your opponent. And generally speaking, what I found, even from training at the other place, which is a very competition-oriented school, um, many of them just very, very much focused, laser-focused on hold the technique for a certain number of seconds to get your points. That doesn't happen in a fight. So some of the techniques are useful in self-defense, but again, they focus more on that competition side, so it, it, it may not necessarily translate as well. We focus again on the self-defense aspect, so I, it's kind of a mixed bag. It really, it, it can at least stress inoculate you if you get used to that adrenaline dump or if you just don't get it at all because you, you feel calm and confident in your capabilities. That can translate into real-world self-defense. If you, if you get nervous in competition, that'll help at least prepare you for a situation on the street where somebody may try to steal your money or hurt you or hurt your family. I think that that's one of the, the better learning lessons you can get from competition versus say, somebody's trying to take me down for points and that's gonna translate into My opponent was trying to rack up points as much as he could, at least from what I could hear his coach yelling him at it. At one point towards the end, I remember him, his coach I should say, telling him hold the position because he was leading in points. Again, that's something that I, I mentioned before, is it doesn't really carry over into the self-defense scenario. Nobody's gonna tell you hold the position for points. You may hold somebody down waiting for law enforcement to arrive, but um, I generally think at least I've tried, uh, or I should say, I tried a few more submissions than he did. I think he, he tried one, and it was essentially when he took my back um, and tried to choke me, but it, it didn't set in really well and I ended up submitting him because he crossed his ankles over. I may be wrong on it, but I, if I remember correctly, I, was, I wasn't even really focused much on points, and I was trying to get into better uh, positions so I could try to submit, and I did manage to get one out. I had a second one locked, but we had a stoppage there by the refs. Generally speaking, I think they were they were trying to rack up more points, and it showed by by the points counts towards the end, obviously. But I was I was the one typically trying to get the submissions if I could from from the position I was in, and if I couldn't, I was trying to improve my position or escape so that I could get into a, a, a better position to try a green ladder attack, essentially. There's always room for improvement no matter who you are and no matter what level you're competing at, no matter whether you got a gold now or you got a silver or a bronze, whatever the case may be, there's always room for improvement. I, I was glad that I had the presence of mind to see some of the mistakes I made at the time. It's always helpful to have uh, friends, colleagues, and, and your professors there to watch and record things so they can point out stuff that you may not have noticed.
hatch because this guy got hurt. I felt like I did a, a, a pretty good job overall for, for what it was and with the de dehydration and, and whatnot involved, uh, <laughs> it didn't help things, but I'm hopeful that I can build on that and try to get that gold and, or at the very least, enjoy myself, learn, have fun, and that's, that's kind of what it all comes down to regardless. For me, when I go into these and future ones, I don't worry about am I gonna get a medal or not, or am I gonna get a trophy, or are people gonna notice me? It's more about can I learn, can I have fun, and can I watch what other people do uh, when, when the ref tells us to fight essentially and, and kind of feel things out and, and learn from my own mistakes, learn from other people's mistakes and learn from what other people try to do to me and whether I can get out of those positions and get into better ones or not. It's, it's all about learning I think and if you, if you make a big deal about trophies, I don't, I don't think you're going to get as much out of it as concentrating on the learning aspects of, of competition and, and making mistakes, doing good things regardless. Thank <laughs> you.